The paper I'll present today draws from a series of posts co-written for Jacket 2 magazine with my fierce and wonderful uh, collaborator, Dee Morris, uh, who does excellent work in new media poetics, among other things. Um, our work looks for points of convergence between 20th century writing and art, media innovation, and tactical actions. Today, I'll try to document the convergence of these three areas of inquiry, specifically as it pertains to a rather curious pr proliferation of rather pranksterish map making in our culture, specifically over the last 15 years, but also with a nod to approximately the last 100 years. Uh, in so doing, I'll emphasize the ways in which technical inventions have both transformed the map as a form of visual knowledge production. In light of what uh, Nathan mentioned this morning, uh, uh, as poesis as a form of uh, uh, boundary work, of exploring and disturbing the tensions of, of what we even get to call the poem. Um, Okay, and in so doing, uh, the ways we might subtend the conventional protocols of mapping. Okay, so another way of saying that is, what am I talking about? Uh, uh, part one, wherein an introduction takes the form of an exhibit. The list of tags to describe works called uh, countermapping which I'll um, elaborate today. Art maps, emotion maps, mental maps, embodied maps, indigenous and bioregional mapping, data maps, neo, tactical, or radical cartography. The names are many. Um, let me give an example of what I'm talking about uh, and maybe a few more after that. So this is as its title suggests, the Institute for Applied Autonomy's Roots of Least Surveillance, which plots roots of least surveillance in Manhattan, along with alternative routes that best avoid them. After the talk, I can come back to some of these. Simon Elvins titles his Braille map of the city, Silent London. In order to meet European Union noise regulations, the UK government records the city's noise levels, allowing researchers to study effects on the public. Elvins uses this data to identify the most silent areas of the city, making silent, uh, marking silence with concentrated braille dots. Uh, we expect that maps are visual and abstract. Here, not only is Elvins' map tactile, it is also interactive, requiring physical touch, an analog, if you will, to the touch screen. Okay. This is Vic, the Brazilian artist, Vic Munitz's uh, WWW. Uh, this basketball court sized world map is an installation piece that consists entirely of junk computer parts and its successor, a photographed reproduction hung in gallery spaces as an interesting triptych. Um, Munitz's work is an elegant rebuttal to the already cliched and pastoralizing talk of cloud computing's clean, green digital environment and a powerful reminder that, the, that poor cities around the world uh, bear the ecological consequences of the deluge of virtual garbage. Okay, uh, Pedro Lach's ongoing series, Latino, Latina America, foregrounds the migratory rate, uh, nature of maps to reflect the populations who use them. Latch gave two copies of these neatly folded maps to migrant workers traveling across the US-Mexico border, asking that they return one by mail once they reached their destinations. Uh, Note the OA in Latino Latina is shaped like a percent sign. And the dirtiness of them is remarkable. Um, this gives a real sense of maps as an, as an embodied journey. OK. Trevor Paglin's selected CIA aircraft routes. 
visualizes CIA rendition flights to and from a network of secret prisons throughout the world. Part of what Paglin calls experimental geography amounts to a situation as drift across the most guarded terrains on Earth. The covert systems of power disclosed most recently by Edward Snowden, systems that actively conceal the geography, economics, and activities of the agencies that come under their purview, overlap the systems uh, Paglin maps, including the NSA's complex web of surveillance programs, the National Reconnaissance Office's operation of US spy satellites, and the, nation, the National Geospatial Agent, Intelligence Agency's interpretations of geographic information that is then coordinated with surveillance data collected by other agencies. Um, let's uh, be certain here, together the NRO and the NGA are the state's cartographers working in the black world with access to untold funds from the black budget supporting CIA directed black ops. Okay, I'll show this one. Uh, Shadows from Another Place by artist Paula Levine is a series of transposed maps using GPS coordinates to translate and represent the impact of terrorist or military actions that take place in one location upon the other. Um, so if we just take a quick look here, um, here's my shameless self-promotion with D at Jacket 2 Magazine, they'll be very happy to know that I'm doing this. Um, here is Paula Levine's project. And what she does, I'll just re replay it. Like these are all, so if you go into the site where, uh, where the map is located, what she'll do is imagine um, Baghdad is as if it were San Francisco plotting all of the major uh, attacks uh, during the invasion of Baghdad onto a map of uh, San Francisco and then um, on these key parts she includes photographic satellite image and photography on the ground that show the destruction of key sites so one gets at least a sense of scale okay so uh, Levine asks, quote, what if international gestures uh, such as war were like boomerangs that return to sites of origins with an equal impact? What would such actions look like if they landed in other backyards or our own? Historical record typically for poor communities and often through difficult times. Uh, Eric Paulos's participatory urbanism is an interesting project as well. Air samplers with carbon monoxide and nitrogen dioxide sensors were mounted on taxis along with GPS units in the Ghanaian capital of Accra. The environmental data collected showed citywide pollution levels, which in turn mirror city, uh, mirror city poverty to the letter. The artists hoped their work would enable poor communities in their bid to enact political and environmental change. Uh, just a couple more, and then we'll get into it. Uh, Jeremy Mendez and <coughs> Leanne Allison's Bear 71 build as an interactive documentary. It chronicles the life of a grizzly bear in Canada's Banff National Park from the moment it's tagged and collared. The story is told in the first person by the mother grizzly bear, but is visualized as a series of data points and for surveillance camera footage, um, really sort of echoing the, uh, the look of, of gaming environments. Um, and so here you are, there's a very nice intro where the, um, you're human 266, blah, 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 and you encounter everything from grizzly bears um, to other wildlife, um, which they pull from the artists pull from um, surveillance camera footage that was mounted in the park in order to document their movings with, um, with encroaching uh, tourism and, and various other things. Um, there's also, uh, 
uh, you move through the park this way, uh, and you meet the various grizzly bears. This is grizzly bear 114. Um, we, f we ultimately uh, follow the actions of bear 71 and her two cubs. And I won't tell you how it ends, but it makes a lot of my students cry. So I kind of told you how it ends. Um, a fascinating work and a really impressive uh, example of how you appropriate and misuse documents, not unlike the way that Amanda has just expressed, if I've not uh, misunderstood. Okay, just last one. This is Laura Kurgan's monochrome landscapes. Um, again, what she does is repurpose high-resolution images from the Icono satellite display. Uh, these are the same kinds of sensing satellite imagery that Google Maps uses. Um, four ecologically precarious landscapes, a desert in Iraq, the rainforest in Cameroon, the tundra in Alaska, and the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Ghana. So here they become these sort of wonderful monochromes um, pieces, but in fact they're environmental works, uh, land art. Uh, these examples notwithstanding, the field of cartography emerged principally as an instrument of state power, fortifying its boundaries and mapping its planned expansions. Dennis Wood remarks that maps blossom in the springtime of the state. Hyperbole aside, there was a marked growth in map making during the 17th century and after. The map manufactured a sense of national unity, often among disjointed regions and disparate communities, while its perceived permanence could give the impression that newly appropriated lands, appropriated lands were always state possessions. Maps initially appear innocent, a neutral representation of the Earth's surface, a factual measurement of here to there, an unproblematic picture of the real. Of course, maps are anything but innocent. They are systems of propositions that tell stories and make arguments at a particular time and in a specific location. Consider in turn the iconic Mercator projection of 1569, the Flemish geographer's cylindrical design, which would become the standard for nautical exploration. Alongside founder of the American map making company, Joseph Hutchins Coulton's 1855 adaptation. Several critics note distortions in the projection, for instance, the expanded size of Greenland and the central position afforded either to Europe or to North America. But note as well, Colton's map features famous travel routes undertaken by naval cartographers and merchants, Cook in Vancouver, for instance, decorated by sailing vessels and steamships. Produced in 1855 with the Industrial Revolution in full motion, the, docu the document maps then known regions for sure, but perhaps more importantly, it maps technical innovation at the service of capital's global colonial expansion. Closer to the present, it bears stating that most significant innovations in mapping are Cold War surveillance effects. Digital spatial technologies, chief among them GPS, the remote sensing satellites on which they rely, on which Kurgan also relied. Uh, geographic information systems, and of course the digital network, originate at least in part from military industrial projects designed for everything from espionage to the census, ballistics warfare to public urban planning. In Close Up at a Distance, Laura Kurgan reflects on the use of these technologies in her documentation of geological depletion. Quote, they can be used to document, memorialize, preserve, interpret, and politicize, or simply as aesthetic devices. But as with all maps, the ones here, as well as the data sets and the technology, technologies used to chart them, are not neutral, end quote. With this in mind, I offer the following provisional definition of countermapping. A countermap artfully subverts the typical coordinates and protocols of traditional map making in such ways that privilege disruptive intervention. Countermaps are differential documents. They disturb, distort, or disintegrate familiar forms. They're warping or torquing of form, their fragmentation, superposition, polyvalence, zooming in, zooming out, and or jamming of codes and scales. A critical alterity interpretive 
and interpretive openness that both exposes the assumptions through which a culture claims, zones, occupies, and navigates space, and proposes new forms through which it is possible to understand our positioning within global totalities. There's only two parts, so don't get scared with the 2.1. Part 2.1, wherein we discuss the curious prevalence of maps in the 20th century avant-garde. Certainly one could source these diverse art-making practices uh, to a number of precursors that long date the 20th century, the allegorical and utopian tradition of imaginary maps, for instance, of which Thomas More's Utopia is perhaps the canonical example, and which still plays an important role in creative mapping over the past couple of decades. Um, this, I don't have them named, uh, Moore's map uh, alongside Nanjing Face, um, Fluxus Island in Decollage Ocean. Um, and what I love about this map is that it's not just like associates of Fluxus, it's various happenings and events. And here's a map that over here where they're doing something wonderfully weird. And he, he documents it as a kind of uh, a playful uh, 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 collective space. More modestly, I'd like to try to trace two converging lineages of unconventional map making. One takes place within avant-garde art practice, the other in community-based protest cartography. Despite its apparent marginal status, the practice of this type of mapping was present in nearly every major art movement of the 20th century in Dada, Futurism, Surrealism, Concrete and Visual Poetry, Fluxus, Conceptual, and Pop Art. There are examples throughout. And of course, Situationism, whose theory of the derive offers us not only an antecedent practice, but also a nascent theory of countermapping as lived experience in urban spaces. Oh my. We'll begin with the surrealist map of the world, a map we could easily spend hours discussing. The image appeared anonymously in the, a Belgian magazine in 1929. Uh, two points of immediate interest, although there are many more. Um, the Pacific rather than the Atlantic occupies the center, banishing Europe to the corner, while North America has been swallowed up by Alaska and Labrador. A 1925 Surrealist Manifesto provides some context. Quote, even more than patriotism, which is a quite commonplace sort of hysteria, though emptier and short-lived than most, we are disgusted by the idea of belonging to a country at all, which is the most bestial and least philosophic of the concepts to which we are all subjected. End quote. This anonymous declaration is made in response to France's incursion into Morocco with the specter of World War I still very much present in Europe's devastated cities. Next, we turn to Dada's most militantly political center in Berlin, a work by chief member of Club Dada and one of the architects of photomontage, Raoul Hausmann's Dada Conquers. The word Dada is painted across a map at the top Uh, of the work and across the exposed brain at the bottom, objects linked by their, their oval shapes. Echoing the surrealist objection to rabid nationalism and war, art should instead triumph the world over. Psychogeography, the technique of transient passage through a city's ambient locales, movements that trespass against those for which an environment was designed. The red arrows indicate the forces a given neighborhood exerted on drifters freed from the typical motivations for moving. Forgive how quickly we move through these um, again in Q&A. If anybody wants the PowerPoint, I will um, gladly send it your way. Klaus Oldenburg, South Manhattan, sutures together mailbags, each representing a different zip code. The weathered quality of the bags, like Latch's Latino America, emphasizes embodiment, lived experience, and also the labor of communication systems. Miko Shiomi's series of spatial, mat, uh, spatial poems, the artist enlisted collaborators from around the world to participate in events performed simultaneously, after which participants would uh, return documentation of the event. Um, in the second 
pictured on the next slide, artists across six time zones were instructed to record their precise actions and the direction they were facing at exactly 10 p.m. Greenwich Village time, October 15, 1965. George Machunas, for instance, was, quote, spinning himself on a spinning chair in a freight elevator which was going up in New York. Part instruction work, part performance piece, part concrete poem. Spatial poems reimagines the site-specific happening as a global fluxus event. Okay, part 2.2, wherein we meet the radical cartographers. In 1968, the year after Du Bois' Society of the Spectacle uh, appeared in print, a geographer by the name of William Bunge co-founded the Detroit Geographical Expedition and Institute with Gwendolyn Warren, and along with a group of young neighborhood residents, undertook a series of experiments in radical cartography. Just as data surrealists and situation artists had begun to experiment with maps, cartographers began to borrow from art in ways that both subverted and expanded the possibilities of map making. And radical cartography is the preferred term of many activist map makers working today, including Bill Rankin, Hackatectura, uh, the Institute for Applied Autonomy, which we uh, encountered earlier, and the Counter Cartographies Collective. The last of these argues for, quote, mapping as militant research aimed to foster cooperation among researchers and participants to practically intervene in problems without attempting to marshal state or administrative power. Bunge's pioneering work would prove invaluable. If cartography traditionally mapped outward toward new frontiers of unexplored terrains and colonial expropriation, Bunge's approach was to map inward toward those pockets of place not undiscovered but overlooked or exploited. Consider an early example of his work. On view, a police report visualizing child death statistics titled Citywide Pattern of Children's Pedestrian Deaths and Injuries by Automobiles. Next, Bunge's map, which plots the same statistics, titles, titled Where Commuters Run Over Black Children on the Points Downtown Track. Uh, thus re renamed, the protest map documents another consequence of white flight. John Snow's 1854 map of cholera in London, Charles Booth's poverty maps of 1899, and the groundbreaking work of the Chicago School of Sociological Research were likely Bunge's own touchstones, but the title is the work of the consummate data trickster. Um, incidentally, um, the minute this track gets named, anybody in the Detroit area um, would have understood what this meant. Um, who it was referencing to uh, uh, um, as, as uh, uh, suburban uh, uh, people living in suburban Detroit moving outside the city through highways that move right through um, poor neighborhoods. They would um, take these posters and um, circulate them, usually in the neighborhoods uh, most affected, but also the neighborhoods that were uh, uh, targeted as the, as the problem. Maps are not innocent presentations of the real, I've said uh, ad nauseum. Uh, Bunge's maps register this point exactly. Like the racism plaguing Detroit's infrastructural and political uh, institutions, the systemic patterns in these maps ask for interpretation. The expedition of the Detroit Geographical Institute find patterns of social relations, a radical cartography of murder sites, pedestrian paths, commuter traffic, and race relations. I'll show you another one uh, quite good, uh, direction of money transfers in metropolitan Detroit. The possibilities afforded by recent advances in data visualization tools ultimately draw upon and expand Bunge's experiments. Many of the maps contained within the Snowden archive, in step with Bunge's, are ready-made counter maps, insofar as their interpretive force requires only a slight shift in frame from a small and secretive intelligence community to a global community of internet users. The slide below 
contains details regarding Boundless Informant, a powerful data mining tool that seizes vast amounts of computer and phone records. The slide indicates a staggering 97 billion pieces of information collected from networks worldwide. This is a heat map showing where, um, the, where surveillance is most concentrated in the world by uh, country or region. And with that, three elements of con uh, converge. Avant-garde mischief with maps, cartography undertaken by militant urban planners, and innovations in media that expand and extend cartographic resources to amateur mappers. Fruitful synthesis of technological innovation and critical inquiry has the potential to allow us to map migratory populations displaced by war or climate change, a bank's collateralized debt obligations and offshore tax havens, or the part of the human genome currently bound up in patent protections. Yet this approach must not be technologically determined. Although the affordances of GPS, GIS, remote satellites, and API set the bells and whistles of recent counter maps, they should not call the tune. Paulos's participatory urbanism makes use of advanced digital mapping and broken down taxi cabs. Mendez and Allison's Bear 71 likewise blends interactive data maps, low-tech surveillance footage, and the geographic records of the park's archived documents. Bunge and his crew of Detroit teenagers worked for municipal records of accidents. At present, the map is becoming something else altogether. And here, I'm not naive, or I hope you don't think me so uh, celebratory of these kinds of um, uh, um, border blurring uh, maps. Uh, a different sort of abstract representation of data merging with the camera's eye and the search algorithm to form a hybrid amalgam of the photographic image, infrared scans, eavesdropping devices, facial recognition, and 3D mapping software are on the horizon becoming uh, the ubiquitous and pernicious form of surveillance uh, we call the life in the 21st century. What gives counter maps their distinctive pattern is not for Dennis Wood, quote, the new technologies with their satellites, their gazillion miles of optic fiber, their computer hardware, and their miraculous software, that is, their extraordinary capitalization, but rather the new attitudes, visions, and radical philosophies of the counter mappers themselves. You might even call it, quote, poetry, he said. One might speak then of a poetics of cartography to depict not states but actions, to make visible breached borders, incursions, escapes, and escapades. Looking back at our mini exhibition, whether one is mapping cities for the blind, warning of shrinking wilderness, or charting the circulation of capital, we are invested ultimately in how we occupy, share, and defend a common world. Uh, thanks very much.